Um, now exactly. talking about Richard for a little bit, Richard's your main character, right? Yeah. Now what makes him special? Why did you, how did you make him special to the story? So for me, uh, so there's going to be underlying currents that uh, are plot spoilers that sort of move forward at, I don't know, like book 20 or something like that, I suppose, that I'm planning out. But Richter is just a guy that kind of stumbled into the right, you know, series of circumstances. And he's just like any old American dude who, you know, is just not perfect is going to, you know, try to more or less be a good guy. But at the end of the day, is just trying to like figure out like who he's going to be. And one of the things that is um, exciting for me looking at Richter is that you're taking this gentleman and it's like, just like if, you know, here in real life, if you gave someone control over a island and said, hey, you're in charge of this now, just seeing like, you know, would it corrupt them? Like, what would they do? What is not acceptable to do? Like, do they become power hungry? Do they kind of just become like a glutton and have all the virgins somehow show up? I mean, you kind of just get to see how he's developing. Um, but also that even though he is growing into a power of his own, so he's not just like a punk that anyone can push over, he's still part of the same, he's growing through a system that other people have been around a lot longer than he has. So, you know, he runs into, you know, characters like in the, you know, third book that just utterly own him at first. But, you know, it's like, how far are you going to push this? What is actually going to... Um, make you win and a lot of times he's not winning because he's going head-to-head he's winning because he's like okay I got to really think this out because these guys are gonna kick my ass and I really have to figure out what I'm gonna do Um, and I feel like I like that about him he also wins because he's been lucky enough to make like the right friends and allies and I mean he would just be totally owned without any of that so I feel like it's more realistic than a lot of the stories that I read where it's like he suddenly is just the baddest guy ever even though he's been around for you know couple weeks but he's a sword master which i mean yeah so i don't know i like it i i i like it too personally uh, i i love your <laughs> style i love the the character art progression not just his growth as you know that he obviously has a high high luck stat obviously to, to connect with all the other great characters but you never made him overpowered um you start him mm-hmm. off on the archery mm-hmm. path and then he kind of progresses into some, the sword path as anyone would yeah. nobody really knows that yeah if you're transported to another world, you wouldn't really know what's going to work for you the best. And I like the fact that exactly. you're in your writing style, you didn't necessarily have his entire um, character progression path plotted out in detail. Like he can switch from one thing to another. Maybe he's emphasizing mm-hmm. magic now because it just works better for his talent. He can't be, you know, a master of all skills. So he's kind of focusing on, on the things that he can and, it, and working. In the, and that's not something he would have known in book one necessarily. Um, yeah. So as as detailed as 